What's going on guys? Welcome back to Network Chuck. Um, sorry I'm late again. I'm rearing to go. Um, <laughs> let me tell you something though. And this is super embarrassing, but I sat here talking to myself for about 25 minutes. I thought I was live and I was going on it, demoing and stuff. And then I looked and I realized I had not clicked the live button. So I thought you guys were chatting with me. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Anyways, we're talking Linux. We're talking Linux labbing. We're talking how I am labbing for my Linux Plus. I've been studying Linux, um, just picked it up uh, about a month and a half ago. Haven't been too consistent, but I've been hot and heavy recently. Me and Linux are really getting serious. And uh, yeah, it was great practice. Great practice run. <laughs> Gosh, I was so mad at myself. But I'm already a cup of coffee in, so that means my energy level is like up to here. Anyways, I've been having crazy technical issues all freaking week, and that's just the icing on top. Anyways, so what am I using to lab in Linux? A thumbnail and the title kind of gave it away. I'm using Azure. I'm using Azure to lab my Linux environment. And many people might think, okay, Chuck, that sounds stupid. Um, that sounds expensive. Why? Well, I'll tell you two reasons, two really great reasons. It's easy to access and it's not that expensive. It really isn't. Um, when I am labbing, um, I'm either you know at home, cool, and I, I wanna access it real quick, or I'm out on the go. So I wanna be able to lab on my stinking phone. I wanna be able to access my Linux configurations. I wanna be able to access my Linux box from my stinking phone. So, gosh, I'm weird to go. Can't believe I was talking to myself for about 20 minutes. Uh, that's what I do most of the time anyway. So, if you don't know what Microsoft Azure is, I'll fill you in real quick. Microsoft Azure is Microsoft's cloud solution. The cloud basically means not your computer, someone else's computer, that's pretty much all it is. And uh, when you set up a virtual machine, a Linux virtual machine in the cloud, yeah, you're gonna be paying somebody else to do it. Now, I said in the title and in the thumbnail, it's free. It is free for 30 days. And I, I don't wanna like have a gotcha or kind of like, oh, uh, clickbait, is that what they call it, clickbait? Uh, no, it's it's absolutely free, no strings attached for 30 days. In fact, let me show you real quick. Gosh, I'm trying to remember what I didn't or didn't already cover in the <laughs> in the dry run of doing this video. Um, the good news is I think I got the kinks worked out. But let me show you real quick. I'll go to my display here. This is my Azure dashboard, by the way. I get to play with this a lot. I mean, you see my budget? I, I'm running stuff all the time. Don't pay attention to that. But if you go to this website, azure.microsoft.com, you can sign up for a free account. Doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter if you're a business, person, toddler, I mean, you gotta have a credit card. Um, but you can sign up for a free account and you will have Azure for free for 30 days. Um, what I love about it is that it's it's really risk-free. Um, after 30 days, you will not be charged a dime unless you say, I love you, Azure, I'm ready to move forward, I'm ready to take our relationship to the next level, um, and let's go to a pay, oh. Let's go to a pay-as-you-go account. So 30 days risk-free, no worries. So you can get a lot of labbing done in 30 days. I don't know about you, but you can do some serious stuff in 30 days, especially if you know you only have 30 days. I love that like that mentality, that mindset, like, oh, I've got a lab for 30 days because I've got a free lab here. Now, but what about what about after the 30 days? Now, I am gonna show you, I just wanna give this real quick uh, before I go into my spiel about why I think you should use it. In this, uh, I almost said nugget, in this video, I will show you how to set up your virtual machine in Azure, going through the portal. I'll show you how to also enable, and this is so cool. It took me a bit and it drove me nuts. Um, I'll show you how to, to enable a graphical interface for CentOS, that's the distribution we'll be using. And you'll be able to RDP into this Linux box. Yes, you heard me correctly. You're going to use remote desktop protocol to access this Linux box um, from your Windows machine whatever and it's it's awesome and it was frustrating and the reason it took me the reason I didn't go live yesterday is I was trying to I was trying to create a script that would automate this and just I would just say hey here you go guys automate it go for it and I almost had it working up to like five minutes before this video and I'm like did it work no <laughs> so, so freaking frustrated <laughs> it's when I punched something it's when I just want to anyways um oh but you got a lot of my decorations I, I love Halloween by the way I'm just gonna check the chat real quick, make sure everyone is uh, alive and well. Oh, but anyways, so the automation didn't work, but the uh, getting things working, let me just give you a preview, a sneak peek of what it actually looks like. I'm gonna go to my main display once again. Now I will be revealing IP addresses here, um, so don't feel special if you get it and you're like, oh, I'm gonna hack Chuck, I'm gonna delete everything afterwards, so leave me alone. Um, this is my CentOS box, which is uh, right here in my Azure, let me go to CentOS 1. 
Uh, again, that's the benefit of having Azure Cloud. You can lab up as much as you want to lab up. Um, I'm going to access this guy right now, connecting to him. Yes. The demo gods better give me some great favor. And fingers crossed. No, I did this before, so don't worry. I, I know it will come alive. I know it will summon, summon, come alive. And um, it'll be here in a minute. I think. <laughs> there it goes. Look at this. I am RDP, RDPing, that I've never known the verb for that, into a CentOS box in the Azure cloud. Amazing. Ah, it just makes me want to cry. It's so cool. Um, anyways, so let, let me just debunk some things here. Is it expensive to have your virtual machine in the cloud? I, I know that um, the other labbing options out there are, are cool too, like if you have a Raspberry Pi. Do that, that's cool, it's so fun. Um, and if you can enable yourself to access it remotely, that's cool too. Um, but also, it can be kind of cumbersome to set up. And then it's it's not, sometimes you can't access it, right? Like sometimes things break. And then you have, maybe you have an old laptop laying around and you install Linux on that. That's fine too, that's a fine thing to do. But I, I love the cloud because A, um, I get to pra practice Linux, and then B, I get to learn a little bit about the cloud in the process, which you should be learning about the cloud, especially Azure. Um, now after 30 days, I know it takes longer than 30 days to get most certifications. What do you do after 30 days? Let me show you how inexpensive, inexpensive it can be to actually have your lab in the cloud. And, and Azure has this handy thing called the pricing calculator. I'll show you real quick. And I can vouch for it. I, I, I do this kind of stuff all the time. Anyways, um, at the Azure pricing calculator, I already threw this in because I uh, did a dry run of the video already. <laughs> but anyways, I selected a virtual machine, I put it in Texas, I selected Linux, CentOS, and I uh, selected my um, the size of it, which is two gigs of RAM. I, I recommend at least two gigs. You can go smaller than that. You can go to like itty bitty, but you're not gonna be able to enable the GUI. It'll just die on you. I tried. Um, and you can say how many hours a month you're going to actually use this virtual machine. That's where it's killer. So I put in 60 hours, 60 hours of lab time. If you're labbing for 60 hours a month, you're a beast. And you know what? A dollar fifty. That's a candy bar. That's a candy bar. So yes, you definitely should right now go sign up for Azure. I, it's, I'm not an affiliate of uh, Azure. I don't get any kickback. I just think it's cool. I think you will benefit so much from learning a little bit of cloud, just going through the process. So at this point in the video, I hope I convinced you to do it. Even if you already have a lab, <laughs> do this already. It's, it's just fun. And um, $1.50, come on, and 30 days free. So go in, go get that account. And before I show you how to set this up, get that account ready. So I'm assuming, and now if you're watching it live, you can't help it, but um, I'm gonna show you real quick how to set up a virtual machine in Azure. It's really, it's really It really is simple. It's not too crazy. Um, I was gonna try and automate it for you, but I didn't get it working. So I'm sorry. Maybe I'll try it again and, and post it in the comments. Um, how's everyone doing tonight? Cool. <laughs> it's hard to it's hard to chat uh, in the chat and then also talk. Anyways, so let's look at the Azure Cloud and get a virtual machine set up. Get to my main screen here, my main display. So here in my Azure, once you sign up, you'll have a screen kind of like this. Maybe not like this. I customize my dashboard. And what you'll want to do is go create a resource at the very top left here. You'll click create. And we're creating our virtual machine. This will be your lab. Um, you can search the marketplace for something. Um, I usually just cl click the uh, Ubuntu server and I can change my image after. And then here's the basic screen where we configure all of our options. Our resource group will be your container for all of your goodness that you create. Now, when you create a virtual machine in Azure, you're creating also um, a subnet, a VNet, you're creating a public IP address. All these are separate resources and they'll be grouped together in this resource group. So I'm going to create a new one. I'll name it My CentOS Lab. I guess it's good. I felt like I was going to continue that. I'll name this My CentOS Lab. Um, choose a region. Now, this, you want to put it close to you, you want to be able to access it quickly. So I'm going to put mine in Texas. If you're in Southeast Asia, do that, right? So I'm going to put it close to me. I'll select my image, which I'm going to change from Ubuntu. I'm trying to get my enunciation right. Ubuntu. Uh, and I'll change that to CentOS based 7.5. Um, I'll change my size because I don't need two virtual CPUs. I don't need eight gigs of memory just to do command line and small GUI stuff. So I'll change the size to standard B1MS. That's the one I recommend. Throw in your password. 
username network chuck I mean we're familiar with password stuff just uh, put it in cool kosher now the next part is, is critical and if you're learning networking and you're already a network boss you'll be familiar with this um, this is creating some access to this virtual machine now Azure by default will keep it locked down which is great which is my, what you might want all the time but you want to allow yourself to access this virtual mean, machine so we're going to allow some ports um, the ports we want to allow are SSH so we can SSH into it and access command line and also RDP so we can access that beautiful GUI um, so that's it for this page. The next one, um, to save some money, we're gonna go to disks, and by default, it'll have you using premium SSD, which you do not need, so change that to standard. A lot better. Um, it's slower, but you're not gonna notice. I haven't noticed, I use this all the time. Now, I wanna meander over to the networking tab, just because I love networking, and um, this process creates a virtual network, a VNet, creates a subnet for you, creates a public IP for you. And then here's your network security group, which you can think of as like, a, like an access list or a firewall. It's so killer and so fun and so cool. You can do so many fun things in Azure and in the cloud. I mean, I, I, I'm not like married to Azure. I mean, we're engaged, but I, any cloud is fun. And, and networking in the cloud is just as fun. So if you're like learning Cisco stuff, I'm gonna be dabbling in this. You can actually install Cisco routers and firewalls and such. In Azure, you can connect your home lab to Azure. You can just do all kinds of things. So back to the lab. Let me switch back to my screen. Um, so networking, I'm not going to change anything here. This is all golden, great, and perfect. Um, but I will change something on the management tab. Uh, by default, it'll have boot diagnostics enabled. Uh, turn that off. Um, what this prevents it from doing is creating an, an additional storage account that you don't need. Um, and then that's, that's pretty much it. Like, that wasn't too bad, right? Um, click Review and Create at the bottom. It's going to validate that your configuration was cool. And then that's it. You click create and a virtual machine is happening. It's creating a virtual machine right now. You get to see it create everything in the process. And before long, you'll have a virtual machine in the cloud. Now, once you do have that set up, you'll be able to, be able to access it like this uh, via command line, via SSH. You'll grab the IP address it'll give you, access this, and then you're off to the races. Now. Um, setting up the uh, the RDP session and all that stuff on the Linux box, uh, CentOS. Now, I chose CentOS. You're probably wondering, why am I labbing on CentOS? It's a distribution of Linux. The most popular one we probably know about is Ubuntu, and most people do that. I chose CentOS because, really, CompTIA said to. Um, they, in their, their book, they recommended that you use CentOS, and I'm okay with that because um, I see my path going down to the Red Hat path after Linux Plus, and Red Hat is just the premium you pay for version of CentOS, or CentOS is the free version of Red Hat. So it's cool, you get to learn enterprise gray level stuff. And it's it's pretty much the same. There are some differences like, you know, yum versus apt, those things, but it's it's great. Um, Anyways, but getting getting RDP set up on this was kind of a pain until I found the right guide. And um, anyways, I put the commands in the description. Enter those commands in the exact order. <laughs> Once you set up this virtual machine, and you will be absolutely golden, I promise you. Uh, I, I spent a lot of trial and error making sure it worked. I think I deployed about, probably, I'm not kidding when I say I deployed about 50 virtual machines, uh, making sure this worked for you guys. And then I tried to automate it and it didn't work. Anyways, so I'll show you real quick and you, you can probably follow a guide better than you can follow this. Um, but looking at my main display, actually I'll just switch to Photoshop and bring this up. Here we go. These are the commands. I'll give you a quick walkthrough of what it's doing. Um, first, you're gonna actually have it use yum, which is the package manager for CentOS, same as uh, apt. You're gonna have it update its packages. Then you'll pull in the EPL release. You can actually install XRDP, which is what we'll be using to actually access the Linux box via RDP. You'll enable RDP. You'll start the RDP service. You will install your favorite graphical user interface. Um, I chose XFCE because it's lightweight and um, it's it's not the prettiest one, but it does the job. Uh, so you'll install that. You will put it in your X client's um, hidden folder in your, um, in your home library. You'll change the permission to execute and, and stuff, and then it'll be good to go. So I'm gonna just, I, again, this, this process kind of takes a bit of time, so I'm not gonna walk through every single step if you enter these commands, it'll work. This command right here will probably take about uh, 10, maybe 15 minutes, depending on 
Azure speed, which should, should be fast because it's, it's Microsoft, right? Um, this should take about two minutes. This will probably take about five minutes. Um, then everything else is pretty, pretty simple. The XFCE might take about uh, 10 minutes. So overall, you're probably looking at 30 to 45 minutes to install all these things. Again, I tried to automate it for you, but it just pooped on itself. <laughs> it was so stupid. Uh, but anyways, I guess I'll just show you a few commands. Um, really not much to show because again, it is a time consuming thing, but you'll, you'll enter um, sudo. I'm not gonna say sudo because it's people say sudo. Sudo yum update, you'll update your packages. That'll take some time. Then you will install the EPL release. So you can actually uh, install XRDP. You will not be able to install XRDP without that command. And then you'll actually run the XRDP installation, which is great. And then you'll enable it with the systemctl. And then you will start it. Now I had a plan to like do like a baking show where I had each step uh, of each virtual machine. I was gonna run through it, but I just didn't have time to set up like 50 million virtual machines. Now, some guides will show you to, um, they'll want you to allow some stuff through the firewall. So if you're setting this up on, uh, on your own CentOS distribution, the firewall might be enabled by default, but in Azure, it's not. And when you install XRDP, it'll actually allow itself in the SE Linux stuff. So you should be fine. And then once you install, Except CE with this command, you should be golden. And let me make sure things, oh, it disconnected me. He cannot back in there. I miss him. It took me some work to get this going, so I like to look at him every once in a while. And for real, once you've entered all those commands, you should be able to access it. Um, a quick reboot will be good. Um, I'll show you a few troubleshooting commands to make sure it's working in case you're having some issues. Because uh, boy, did I have some issues. Now, let, me, let me get back to my face. And uh, check it on you guys, because I haven't looked at the chat in a while. How's everyone doing? Someone said they're not seeing something. Oh, I'm bummed you couldn't see my command line. Oh well, no worries. <laughs> my bad, well you, um, you can see me now. Dude, someone passed CCIE. RYT peps, congrats, that's incredible. I don't know how um, how you did that. All right, anyways, what was I doing before? Y'all distracted me. Oh yeah, uh, so once you set this up, once you've entered all those commands, it is possible you'll have some issues. Um, some things you can do, let me get to the one that's working. Make sure your ports are open and running. Oh, did my session die out? No, it didn't. Um, you can do sudo um, netstat dash app, uh, what was it? I think it's uh, ant up. Yeah, this one will tell you what you want. And I'll grep for um, XRDP to make sure things are looking good. Enter my sudo password. And yes, so I can tell that 3389 is running. I think things are looking fine. Things are looking great. And I realized I'm not showing you my screen again. Man, I'm telling you, tonight is not the night. <laughs> so anyways, again, the command, I'll insert it again, sudo netstat dash ant up, and you'll grep for XRDP. And there we go. It'll And you should be, be able to make sure that 3389 is running. Also, 3350 will be doing the pass-through for VNC and make sure that's running as well. If you run into some issues, you can also restart the service, which let me grab that command. Because, you know, I don't memorize commands. Uh, let me go grab it. And you can also uh, run this process with um, GNOME and all the other cool things. Actually, I'll just do uh, sudo system ctl uh, restart xrdp. Yeah, so like this, it disconnected me from my RDP session. So yeah, um, you can run through that. Make sure things are solid. You can enable it, disable it. There's some basic troubleshooting steps I would take. Now I'm realizing that this live stream was probably a jumble of confusion and chaos because um, technical issues. <laughs> so I apologize if this was kind of hard to follow, uh, but the spirit of it is still alive. If you want to lab up Linux, which I encourage you to learn Linux, um, Linux Plus, whatever you want to go for. Um, if it's going to be Elpic, go for Elpic. If it's going to be Red Hat stuff, I forget the red, uh, red Hat 
um, uh, abbreviations, but it's amazing and you should do it in Azure. Do it or AWS, I don't care, Google Cloud. Azure's cool, Azure's big. Azure, I think, will be the winner over all the clouds and um, it'll be the biggest cloud out there. I know that's controversial. And this is similar to the one, uh, yes, yes, George, RDP on Linux. It is indeed RDP on Linux. Um, VNC is fine too, but I thought it'd be fun to do uh, RDP because it's, you know, everyone's got RDP going. Sorry, I got it. I'm not checking my watch. I got an update. And there's other ways to access. Like I know, I know there's more advanced ways to access. So someone mentioned uh, VNC through SSH, but uh, this is a simple way to get it up and running. This is for just quick labbing for yourself, for your lab. Uh, to be able to practice Linux because Linux is amazing. Anyways, um, that's pretty much the, the video. So I'm going to just look at the, the chat and do some AMA. Um, someone said Azure is not catching up with AWS anytime soon. That's Zabino. Um, I, I, I think it's gaining some crazy market share. I would watch out. You never stinking know. I saw a question uh, from Yonatan Makara, should I learn Linux first or wait for the new CCNA? Um, I'll tell you this, my default advice for anyone is never wait. Don't wait for anything. Don't wait for anything. Um, if you wanna go for CCNA, um, let's see, what, what is it, September 24th? Tight timeline, um, you could go for it now. I mean, it, it, you, it's possible, it definitely is possible. Difficult, because like, what is it, September? So it's almost October, so that gives you what? Five months, if we're talking February 2020, you could do it. Um, but if you're gonna wait for the new CCNA, totally understand. Go for Linux right now. Don't wait for don't wait to learn. Learn Linux. Go for it. My my default will always be start now. Mike the medic, yeah, Ninja is on Microsoft. The beginning of the Microsoft Cloud takeover. Yes, absolutely. Ninja joined uh, Mixer from uh, Twitch. I didn't know this for a long time, but Twitch is owned by uh, Amazon Prime, or not Prime, owned by Amazon, and uh, Mixer is owned by Microsoft. So we'll see where it goes. Uh, Redresh asks, where can I learn Linux for free? Uh, that's the beauty of Linux, is it's most stuff is free, like you can get Linux for free, and there are so many amazing articles out there. And the problem is finding structured, amazing training for Linux. Uh, and I think free, Man, if you want like a good structured uh, learning environment, free ain't gonna be your thing. Uh, you can find a great course for ten bucks. You can go on uh, CBT Nuggets, um, shell out some money there, uh, get some really really great engaging training. Uh, but you gotta invest in yourself. I understand money's tight for people. Totally get that. I've been there. I've been there. I've been there to where if I fail that exam, I can't pay for another exam and like for like six months because I spent some time saving that. So I've been there. I know that. Uh, but you have to invest in yourself. There, there, there's going to be sacrifice for things that are worth it. So do it. Super Tao, hello. Uh, Super Tao, you just passed your Network Plus, right? Congrats. Good to see you in the chat. And I'm totally digging that. Um, you've been a member for one month. I'm digging that uh, icon next to you. And also, so I, I've, I've been uh, talking with people in, uh, in uh, my Discord channel. There are... Uh, there's a thing called, I'm blanking on everything tonight. You guys help me, I've been working, I, I did some nuggets this morning in Azure and then I did this and I'm like, my mind is fried. And also I haven't eaten today. So I'm like, I think my mind is dead. Um, the war games, the war games, the uh, capture the flag type stuff for Linux. There's a, a site that's free where you can go through these Linux challenges to get it. And uh, I was thinking about doing a, uh, a live stream where we just, we, we pop on a live stream and I just go through the challenges, see if I can uh, pass it get your help, get your input when I hit some snags. Would you guys be into that? Would you want to see me go through the, I think it's called War Games. I forget what it's called now. But let me let me know. <laughs> I think it'd be fun. <laughs> uh, uh, what network certs are there not specific to Cisco? Um, asks Ashby. Um, well, Network Plus is a good one. It's generic. Um, but as far as like getting a network certification, you gotta get Cisco. Juniper is, I think, the second place. Um, but Cisco's the one. Cisco's the one. Oh, Jean Lewis or Jean Lewis, how do you get the free lab? Uh, he's late. Well, you can rewatch the thing, <laughs> or the free lab basically the lowdown in like ten seconds. Go sign up for an Azure account. You get thirty days uh, free trial, risk free, to lab around all you want. Set up a Linux VM. 
uh, remote into it. I showed you how to do RDP in this video and have fun. After 30 days, if you're labbing for 60 hours a month, it'll cost you about $1.50 a month. So I think most people can deal with that. Oh, um, Michael Montanez, dude, Montez, I can never say your name, Montez, good to see you, man. Um, yeah, you know what? What people don't realize is that when you mem memorize a lot of commands, you'll me uh, forget about 95% uh, of those. Um, so using a cheat sheet, Google, um, I use Evernote to keep track of stuff. Man, don't feel bad if you forget crap. I forget stuff all the stinking time. Oh, so great question from, I think it's J.R. Bolivar. Um, have I heard about Cumulus or Vi ViOS? I think it's ViOS or ViOS. Yes, I have. And I've been toying with the idea of playing with some because um, I'm moving into a new house in about a month and I've been trying to decide what I'm going to deploy my network as. I'm changing up my entire network and I want to do open source. And um, I was talking with uh, a guy from Hillsong, uh, Ricky Cook. Uh, this guy's awesome. And uh, he said Hillsong runs off ViOS. So uh, I think it'd be interesting to try out all this open source stuff. I love open source. I think it's so cool. I think it's fun. And uh, Cisco is cool, but they, I, I, the vendor lock-in is going away, I think. And I, I, I love Cisco to death, but they're very lock, lock and key. In fact, they're not really like playing with me so much anymore either. Like I, I used to have a ton of access to Cisco, and now they're kind of like, later, Chuck. So I'm like, well, Linux is free, <laughs> so I'm gonna go play with Linux. Oh man, any uh, burning questions at all? Because uh, I'm gonna leave and go eat. Because <laughs> I know my wife will want me to go pick up some food. Uh, Andy asks, what are some good entry level certs for voice over IP? Uh, right now, gosh, because the CCNA voice or CCNA collaboration is going away. Um, entry level, I don't know of any right now that are like good in the industry. I think CCNP collaboration is probably the best way to go. Um, Jonathan, French guy who speaks a little bit of English. Um, hello, or bonjour. How was my accent? Uh, should I learn routing and switching first or Linux? Um, always learn what's going to help you where you're at immediately. So if you're at a job that you think Linux would be most valuable to you, learn that. If you think you're at a job where routing and switching would be most valuable, learn that. Always learn what's going to get you ahead where you're at at that moment. Um, but as far as... And, you know, it's it's a tough one. I think uh, I think routing and switching probably, and then get into Linux, if if you don't have like a job that's pressing you to do either or. Motivation tips from uh, Ifiatu. He's asking any any motivation tips. Um, you know, you guys are the most motivated people. What what kind of tips can we have for him? He's uh, going for his CCNA and uh, he's having trouble. I think for me, what I do is I, I to keep myself motivated. I have to lab every single stinking day or I, I feel uh, I, I get imposter syndrome I start to feel weird so labbing and giving myself those small successes where I like get to plan the command line and actually do something cool I mean like today I had some trouble with uh, some stuff and, and I was labbing and like it, nothing was working I was about to ready to punch a hole in the wall uh, but then I went through a few successes and a few wins and that really helped out I saw a question here I wanted to answer and now it's it's disappearing what to go for after CCIE from uh, R-Y-T-P-E-P-S. I'm, like, I'm just trying to say your name. Um, dude, automation all the way. Automation, Python, as much as you can get into. Um, especially with this new stuff coming out, uh, all the new uh, DevNet certifications. Um, it's, it's interesting to have the CCIE, but for all the new certifications coming out, all the enterprise um, automation tracks coming out for the NP, I would go for those because uh, things are changing. Things are changing. So if someone's asking, uh, what kind of goals do they uh, do? A, you set for yourself when doing a lab? Um, like they're going through like setting up Nextcloud or um, private cloud. I, I struggle with that too. Um, like figuring out a good play, a good lab to just go through. Um, finding projects like setting up RDP and the cloud for a Linux. Oh, sorry, like heartburn for some reason uh, for a Linux box. That was a project for me or doing any kind of cool um, Raspberry Pi project like setting up an OB, open VPN server will be great. Um, just finding like Linux projects 
would be great. Um, for CCNA, lab guides are a killer. You should do that. Um, Bows on net sim, incredible. I would go for that. Now, I did spend a little bit of time in college, but not to learn uh, networking. I'd already learned networking at that point. But no, uh, learning networking, learning IT, was all um, a combination of self-study and on-the-job training. So I, uh, I started working on my A+, I got a help desk job, and then I picked up networking immediately. I shadowed somebody, I saw that it was amazing and I wanted to get into it. So mostly on the job and um, a lot of self-study. That's the best way. People, people don't realize, like, this, this career is so unique, it's so interesting, I mean, maybe it's not, because I haven't had like every career, but I think it is, I think it's amazing, I think it's unique. This career, you'll be spending all your time, or a lot of it, learning, 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 and learning, because you'll encounter something new every single day. Um, so you have to learn how to study, you have to learn how to self-study every single stinking day. Oh, I'm starting to fade fast, guys. Um, I'm trying to read all these comments and go through them, but I'm 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 feeling pretty tired. <laughs> Rand's asking why can't Cisco extend Cert Apocalypse? Wants to get CCNA, and yeah, uh, he has a, a short time to get it. Yeah, um, it's uh, it's a short time, about five months between now and um, I think if my math's right, between now and February 2020, I still think you can do it. Now, if you started two months ago, that would have been better, right? But I think you can do it. Like I'm going for um my CCMP route and CCMP switch before a Cert apocalypse. I'm gonna get it, I have to, I'm going to do it. And um, it's possible. Anyways, guys, I'm going to uh, sign off here. Um, a quick update on my uh, Linux Plus. I have it scheduled for October 1st, but I've been so swamped with crap, I haven't had a ton of time to study. So I'm gonna I'm gonna study a lot here in the next few days, see how I feel. I might extend it, because I, I wanna, I wanna Give it the best I can. I don't feel ready on it. I want to be able to create content on it. I want to feel good about it. I want to be able to teach you guys some things. Um, I want to walk away feeling like I know it before I go to the exam. So I may postpone it a bit. And then I'll also be taking some uh, Azure stuff and some <laughs> Cisco stuff. It's, I got a lot of stuff going on. But it's, it's fun. It's, it's amazing and I'm so excited. Now Halloween is coming up. I love Halloween, as you can tell. Um, this is probably just the beginning of what I'm going to be doing in my office. And uh, let me know what projects you want to see uh, Halloween focused, if you're a big fan of Halloween. I think that could be fun. And uh, anyways, my my thing I want to leave, uh, leave you guys with tonight is the key to being successful in IT, the absolute key, the thing you want to make sure you have is you want to have fun. Like that, that, is, that is the only thing you really need. <laughs> have fun with what you're doing. If you're not having fun, you're going to burn out and you're going to hate it. So find something you really enjoy doing. If you get into a CCNA, CCNA lab and you love configuring OSB, if you love troubleshooting, which I do, man, you're, you're going to do it all the time. You, you, your spouse's significant other or your friends aren't going to be able to tear you away from it. So find something you love and have fun doing. If it's not fun for you, push past that a little bit. Like Just see if it's maybe just a hurdle. But if you've been doing it for a while and it's not fun, maybe try something else. But you have to make sure it's fun. And maybe it's just a different area of IT you got to try. Like, um, I'll be honest, sometimes doing Cisco stuff constantly <laughs> gets pretty tiring, pretty boring. So um, switching to Linux or switching to Azure, man, it's like a breath of fresh air. Like, oh, I love IT. I forgot how wonderful this was. Anyways. Oh, Jer asked about um, IPsec VPNs. Um, I haven't done a video about that in a while. I did talk about how I have a... Uh, a DMVPN, DMVPN connection to my data center and actually traveled around Europe connecting back to my data center here in Texas and that was pretty fun. Anyways, guys, that's about all I have for today. I'm going to end. I'm going to go get some like food or something and uh, <laughs> probably do some labbing. But thank you so much for sticking around. Um, we're at 160, I think, 3,000 subscribers now, which is I don't even know what to think. I'm just thankful, blessed, and I'm thankful for all of you who stick with me. And um, it's so encouraging for me because I struggle just like you. I have struggled like, throughout this past week. I've been dealing with crap where I just feel like I can't do anything. I wake up and I'm like, I can't today. And I reached out on Twitter, and people had all these amazing suggestions. So like, yeah, we we're in the same boat. So when I get on here, man, I'm not the expert. I'm not. I'm just another guy like you, going through it all, trying to figure it out. And um, trying to have fun. That's all it is. 
Well, I'm going to sign off before I ramble anymore, and I'll, uh, I'll see you guys next Monday for sure. I might post a video throughout the week. Catch you guys later.